that we're all getting the uh, best possible experience of learning that we can get. So I'm gonna go ahead and shift now to uh, share screen. And we are still on the unit for mastering functions, okay? And the first thing I wanna talk about here is our technology norms. Uh, let's make sure that we have our first and last names on, on there. So you go ahead and do that as you go in and rename. Make sure that uh, when you're not speaking that you're muted. Uh, you know, sometimes little brothers and sisters may come in, interrupt you or, or maybe your dog might start barking or something, okay? So make sure that um, you are muted when you are not speaking and unmuted when you speak. Uh, we'd like you to have your cameras on because we would love to see your you and get to know you as well as we uh, work together to try to learn uh, the subject. And then just be ready to share. That's you know that's the key here. Um, also would like you to make sure that you have yourself set up on gallery mode. Uh, it'd be great for you to make sure that you can see uh, everybody in the class. Um, and that way, you know, we can we can all work together and, and try to, you know, not not feel isolated out there. OK. OK. Now, first thing we're going to do is we're going to talk about this whole idea of transformations. Now, transformations, uh, we prior to the section on uh, trigonometric functions, we did transformations of basic types of polynomial functions and things of that nature, particularly quadratics and cubics. And um, one of the things that we dealt with were these shifts, these horizontal and vertical shifts. And we also talked a lot about reflections across the axes right x axes and y axes and then we also talked about um dilations you know the shrinking and stretching of curves okay and just as we do uh with regular f of x type functions we will be doing this with trigonometric functions as well However, just keep in mind that with trigonometric functions, you are going to have different types of shapes, you know, like shapes for sine curves and cosine curves and things like that, um, tangents and, and all of those types of measures. And then we're also going to have to follow special properties for the values that we use, because if we're dealing in radians, we will have to concern ourselves with uh, multiples of pi uh, to deal with radian measures. And, uh, you know, that's the, the key difference. So what I'd like you to do for take a few minutes and on your notepad, I would like you to, for each of these categories here, you see the four buckets on the upper, on the first quadrant, we have vertical transformations right, and it's a k times f of x, which means that some k value multiplied by the entire function has the effect of shrinking or, or stretching uh, the function either towards or away from the x-axis, okay? And there are the conditions for it there. You see that absolute k less than one will cause a shrink versus a absolute k greater than one will cause a stretch, okay? Then we go down to uh, the second quadrant, which is translations. And there, this is where we're talking about our left and right uh, shifts, your horizontal and vertical shifts, okay? Again, there are the conditions for the functions. The only thing that you would have to do different here with trigonometry in a general sense, is that your functions themselves will be different. You'll be dealing with trigonometric functions, okay? And, um, you know, and again, of course, uh, the vertical one as well. And then in quadrant three, horizontal transformations, which means 
dilations, but in a horizontal way relative to the y-axis, okay? And then finally, in quadrant four, you have the reflections. You're either going to reflect about the x-axis or reflect about the y-axis. So I'd like you to take about, you know, three or four minutes there and just quietly in your on your notepad, I want you to select, you know, uh, two or three of the quadrants and think of an actual example of how you can see a transformation occurring with a trigonometric function, given that we've already had a discussion on trigonometric functions, you understand what these functions are. Now we're going to be talking about, let's go ahead and have some transformations occurring with them. So I'm going to go ahead and let you do that, take a few minutes, and then we'll come back and, um, and discuss this, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and, um, and pause and wait for you to continue this, okay? All right. In four minutes and uh, great. Okay, so then uh, we got the results now from uh, uh, from Tanya. Okay, Tanya gave us one example. Uh, she said that a shift of the graph of sine of x to the right by pi units. Okay, you would write it as sine of pi, right? And it will be this one up here. This one that I'm highlighting sine of pi minus, okay, minus the difference there. So, or in this case, we would say my uh, x minus pi. So instead of using a, like we did for other transformations, like using numbers, here we're gonna actually use the radian measures, okay? So x minus pi, as you recall, a, um, a right transformation when a is, less than zero, right? Like, a, for example, minus A, right? Or minus pi would be a right shift, okay? So that's a very good job there, Tanya. Good observation on that one. And what about Gilbert? Okay, Gilbert, can you give us an example? Okay, very good. Gilbert took the graph of X squared and he made it thinner right, by putting a, um, a coefficient in front of it, right? So let's see what he did. He took, he said, let's go ahead and make uh, x squared into 3x squared. So what he did was he, his function here was x squared, right? And the x squared would have just been like a parabola, right? And then he applied a multiple out here. And when you do that, if it's greater than one, it stretches it out, okay? So essentially these are the types of rules is that you, an expectation is that you will be able to, uh, to apply these things as we work on our, on our projects, okay? On our activities. So there are some key terms that you're gonna come across and you know, whenever you're delving into a new situation where new language is going to be used, uh, it is important that you understand the language, right? So here we go. Let's talk about the three main ones that we'll need to know when we deal with transformations. One is called the amplitude, okay? And, you know, the amplitude is, if, for example, if you took a sine, a sine curve and you... Uh, just were interested if you drew a line right through the middle of the sine curve and you were interested in just from that line up to the peak that would be the amplitude and we really don't measure the positivity or negativity of that we just measure the magnitude and therefore that's why we have that in absolute value uh let's take a look here so the period, which is the length of a cycle or the shortest interval before the graph repeats. So for example, if uh, one complete cycle is 360 degrees, right? Well, then that's just gonna be two pi, right? Because we're doing it in radians. 
But if you, the period P, right, is always going to depend on what multiple you put in to that function. So as you can see right here, we're putting a multiple of B, and that is going to impact the duration of that cycle. So therefore, you would take the absolute value of that and divide it into a two pi. So for example, if B is two, right, then what that means is that you're going to be able to get a complete cycle in through pi radians, okay? And then phase shift, uh, that's the horizontal translation of a periodic function, okay? Phase shift. Horizontal, remember, we're, we're shifting phases. So here is where our graph is, and we're going to start into our activity. And so, right? And so this.